Well, in this presentation, we're going to carry on considering medical terminology, learning to speak the language. And in this presentation, we're looking at the cardiovascular system. And as you see from the diagram on the right, the cardiovascular system is considering the heart and all of the vascular system circulating blood around the body. And we'll be including some normal terminology and some medical pathological terminology as we go through. And if we think of it as we go along, we'll put in some interesting bits and bobs about the anatomy and disease processes that we're discussing. Now, to start off our consideration of the cardiovascular system, we'll look at the heart fairly specifically. And in this picture here, we can actually see a sheep's heart. And it's amazing how detailed you can see the coronary arterial circulation there as the coronary arteries are carrying blood to the myocardium, the contractile muscle of the heart. So card, sometimes with an I and an O on the end, cardio means to do with the heart. It denotes the heart. And it actually comes from the Greek word for heart, which is cardia, but spelt with a K, interestingly. But in English, we tend to spell it with a C. So card to do with the heart. And ac, the two letters, the AC suffix there, actually means pertaining to. So cardi, ac, heart pertaining to, cardiac. So cardiac is anything pertaining to the heart. An obvious example is cardiology, ology being the science or the study of. And a cardiologist is usually someone who's a doctor who specializes in studying cardiology, in studying diseases of the heart. So that's an easy one really. Anytime you see the prefix card or cardio, it's to do with the heart. So here we see some examples of card representing the heart in pathological conditions. Endocarditis, myocarditis, pericarditis. Now endo means inside, myo means muscle, and peri means around about the outside. So the endocardium is the inner lining of the heart, the myocardium is the muscle middle layer of the heart and the pericardium is the fibrous sac around about the heart. Actually, the pericardium is in, in two parts or three parts, as we see from this. There's the serous pericardium, which is the visceral layer. That's sometimes called the epicardium. Then there's the pericardial cavity, which is more or less a potential space. And then the serous pericardial layer and the fibrous pericardial sac on the outside and there's lubricating fluid between the serous pericardium and the um, well the serous visceral pericardium and the serous parietal pericardium so the heart can move nicely inside this sac um, but of course itis the suffix itis on the end means inflammation of so endocarditis is inflammation of the endocardium often caused by a bacterial infection Myocarditis is inflammation of the myocardium. Typically, that's a viral infection. Pericarditis, that can be a viral infection, but it can also occur after a myocardial infarct, for example. There can be a, a sterile pericarditis. So quite nice um, three-part words there, the prefix, the root, and, and the suffix. Endocarditis, myocarditis, pericarditis. And because we see the bit in the middle, the card bit, we know it's all to do with the heart. Itis on the end, as you know, probably always means inflammation of. Itis on the end doesn't tell us what causes the inflammation. It doesn't tell us whether it's infection, whether it's a virus, whether it's a sterile inflammation. It just tells us that there is inflammation. It is no more, no more specific than that. Now here we see the suffix cardia on the end of a word. So immediately we know it's to do with the heart. Tachy, T-A-C-H-Y, means fast. Brady, B-R-A-D-Y, means slow. So a tachycardia is a fast heart rate. A bradycardia is a slow heart rate. And typically we'll say that a tachycardia 
is anything above 100 beats per minute and a bradycardia anything below 60 beats per minute. Now, there can be a pathological tachycardia when the heart is beating faster than 100 beats per minute for a, a pathological reason because there's a disease state. But of course, a tachycardia can be completely normal. If you go for a jog, you're going to get a tachycardia because the heart rate can easily go above 100 beats per minute. And of course, that's perfectly normal. Bradycardia, again, there can be a pathological bradycardia. That's bad because if there's a pathological bradycardia, there might be insufficient cardiac output to meet the metabolic demands of the body. But there again, bradycardias can be perfectly normal. So if you're young and fit, it's not out of the question, especially if you're quite athletic, that your heart rate could be well under 60 beats per minute. And of course, that's absolutely perfectly normal. That would be a physiological bradycardia. So always important to distinguish between physiological and pathological tachycardias and bradycardias. But the word is very easy. Tachy, fast, cardia, heart. Brady, slow, cardia, heart. The prefix and the suffix tell us what the words mean. Now, how do we obtain these traces of what the heart is doing in electrical terms? Well, we take electrocardiogram, an ECG, or sometimes called an EKG. In a sense, EKG is a more accurate term because cardia, the Greek word cardia, begins with a K. So electrocardiogram. So the electro part means that this is detecting electrical activity because when the myocardial cells depolarize, there's going to be an electrical change and the ECG is the electrical activity that occurs as a result of myocardial polarization and depolarization or depolarization and repolarization to be more technically accurate, usually as detected on the surface of the body. And here we see the position of the stickers for a 12 lead ECG. So electro is the electrical activity. Cardio is to do with the heart. And gram means something drawn or to do with drawing. So it's electrical activity, heart, drawn out into an ECG or an EKG recording. Electrocardiogram. Well, here again, we see cardio at the front of the word as the prefix, so we know it's to do with the heart. And we notice at the end of the word, there's pathy. And we know that pathy means disease of or to do with disease. So we're clearly talking about some kind of heart disease here. And myo means muscle. And the muscle of the heart is the myocardium. So we've got cardio, heart, myo, muscle, pathy, disease of. Cardiomyopathy is disease of the heart muscle. Now this could be caused by viral infection, could be caused by toxins, could be caused by deficiency of vitamin Bs. Vitamin B deficiency over time can lead to cardiomyopathy. And uh, in the UK, unfortunately, we often see this as caused by uh, alcohol, alcoholic cardiomyopathy. And because this disease of the heart muscle, the contractility of the heart muscle is reduced the heart is not contracting properly. And if the left ventricle cannot contract with sufficient vigor to get adequate cardiac output, the tissues of the body aren't going to be sufficiently perfused to meet their metabolic demands. So the metabolic demands of the body will not be fully met because the reduced cardiac output caused by disease of the heart muscle. And this will lead to cardiac failure. Over time, there'll be a cardiac failure caused by a cardiomyopathy. This can occur chronically. It can take a long time to develop sometimes. But you can also get acute uh, cardiomyopathy. After viral infection, for example, you can get an acute cardiomyopathy if there's been a virus which has affected the myocardium. So cardio prefix, myo, the bit in the middle, pathy, the suffix, cardiomyopathy. So here we see cardio at the beginning of the word as the prefix, so we know this has got something to do with the heart. And megaly means big or enlarged. So cardiomegaly is an enlarged heart. And in this situation, we see a pathologically enlarged heart on this x-ray. 
the heart should not take up more than half of the total width of the chest and here we can see that this heart is greatly enlarged in this case uh, in a child because of uh, valvular heart disease that it caused a cardiomegaly so it can be caused by heart disease because the heart's having to work way harder to compensate for the valvular deficiency in western countries we often see cardiomegaly as a result of hypertension if there's a systemic arterial hypertension the heart has to work harder to pump against the increased resistance in the vascular system and when the heart is working harder it's just like if you go down to the gym and start working out your muscles will get bigger and it's the same with the heart if it's working harder it's going to enlarge you're going to get a cardiomegaly but of course this is a pathological situation it's not supposed to be like this it's actually caused by a hypertrophy of the individual muscle cells they get bigger it's not that you develop more muscles the muscle cells the muscles just the muscle cells that are there just get bigger and we get this cardiomegaly but the problem is over time this will lead to cardiac failure and we'll get a cardiac failure where the heart is unable to pump out sufficient blood to meet the metabolic demands of the body now if you do lots of exercise your heart muscle will get bigger and that's good that's a physiological cardiac enlargement you get athletes hearts that are bigger and it will show on the chest x-ray as being an enlarged heart but that's a physiological situation that's a physiological cardiac enlargement and that's a sign of long-term training and very high levels of physical fitness so that's good but we normally use the term cardiomegaly when we're talking about the pathological diseased situation